Uh, I want to go back to something I mentioned in the introduction to the videos, uh, which is that uh, in these videos we're focusing on double-headed arrows, not single-headed arrows. So we are, are going to be uh, not focusing on radical mechanisms. Um, so again, notice that all the arrows that I've drawn so far have been double-headed. So this is what a double-headed arrow looks like. I haven't drawn any arrows like this. I haven't drawn any single-headed arrows. Instead, they've all been double-headed. Well, what's the difference between these two types of arrows? Well, uh, a single-headed arrow indicates the movement of a single electron, whereas a double-headed arrow indicates the movement of a pair of electrons. So I think that's pretty uh, intuitive. If there's uh, two fish hooks on the arrow, that stands for two, uh, two electrons that are moving. And if there's only a single fish hook on the head of the arrow, that stands for only one electron that's moving. Well, again, you've seen that all the reactions that we've done so far, we've been using double-headed arrows. Um, and you can see that we really have been moving pairs of electrons. For example, uh, here I took a lone pair on the X, and I took that pair of electrons, and instead of it being a lone pair anymore, it's become a pair of electrons in the bond. So this single arrow here, and this one arrow told us to take the two electrons in the lone pair and transform them into two electrons in the bond. And similarly with the next arrow, we had an arrow, uh, a double-headed arrow, so it indicates the movement of two electrons. So we took two electrons out of this lone pair, and instead we put those two electrons into a bond. Uh, so I just wanted to point out that we are working with double-headed arrows, which means that each of the arrows we're going to be working with tells you about the movement of a pair of electrons, two electrons. Uh, if, if we were going to work with any single-headed arrows, that would indicate the movement of only a single electron. But uh, again, that's a topic for another series of videos. We won't be dealing with that in this series. Try drawing the product from this reaction. So far I've just redrawn the starting materials and now I'll start to make modifications. Well this arrow indicates that we should be taking the electrons out of the lone pair and because the head of the arrows is pointing to the bond region we know that that indicates that we're making a new pi bond. So we can erase the pair of the lone pair of electrons, instead put that pair into a new pi bond. And as usual in these videos, I've actually drawn that pair of electrons that we're following in that bond, so that you can really see how this arrow, this double-headed arrow, indicates the movement of a pair of electrons from a lone pair into a pi bond. This is just another example of this transition we've already been talking about, lone pair to pi bond. Up here, um, there was only a single bond so far. So when we made the pi bond, we ended up with a double bond. Down here, the starting material already had a double bond. So when we created um, the pi bond, uh, we were up to three bonds, a triple bond. Uh, but th there isn't really any, uh, I don't think, any uh, substantial difference between uh, these two examples. Uh, if you can handle this, you can probably handle this as well. Try this example. Try this example. It's really the same as before. The tail is on the negative charge, which means that it really indicates the movement of a pair of electrons, a lone pair of electrons. So I'll draw those pairs in. And so what this tells us is that we're taking the pair of electrons out of the lone pair and using them make, to make a pi bond. So I'll erase the pair of electrons in uh, the pi bond, and I'll go ahead and erase this negative charge at the same time. And I'll put the pair of electrons over here. Uh, and again, I'll just remind you one more time, 
that I'm not really worrying about what the correct charges are on a lot of these atoms. I went ahead and er erased this negative charge because that was pretty obvious that was going to happen. But uh, I'm not really worried about the correct charges on all these other X's and Y's that I've drawn. So at this introductory portion of the videos, we're just learning about um, when to draw or erase lone pairs and when to draw or erase uh, bonds. We're not wor really wor worried about getting the charges right yet. All right, well, again, this is just one more example of how you can have a lone pair to pi bond transition.